All right, we are back for another great episode of Black Equity. I am your host, DJ Moultrie, where we talk about the uh, business of Black culture. And I'm excited about this conversation. I've been following this account for quite some time. And I think it's time that we uh, connect and build and figure out how we can help one another. And so on the line, we have Danielle McGee. She is over a Black Business Boom. Welcome to Black Equity, Danielle. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Definitely, definitely. For those who don't know, tell us a little bit about uh, Black Business Boom and how this all got started for you. Absolutely. So Black Business Boom is actually known as the Black Groupon, um, and we promote Black-owned businesses using promotional offers. So the goal is to help Black-owned businesses to increase their profitability uh, by increasing their customer base. And that's what I help businesses to do. We promote the, uh, the promotional offer on our proprietary mobile app, Boomin, uh, that can be found on the Apple and Google um, app stores. And we also use social media and native ads to promote the promotional offers for black owned businesses. So that is what I do. I've been doing it. Um, we launched in November of 2018. And it's just been growing ever since. And we are here in Nashville. We launched here in Nashville. We initially launched nationwide actually, but we only had kind of sprinkles of businesses in some of the other cities. So we're formally launching in other cities um, in the next quarter. So you should uh, see Black Business Boom nationwide, hopefully by the end of the year. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think the, the thing that jumps out at me is why, why go down this route? You could have just did just, you know, business in general, why black businesses? Why was that the focus? So why was that near near and dear to your heart? Um, I'm unapologetically all about supporting black owned businesses. And as a black business owner myself, I owned uh, a spa in Chicago for several years. I've owned other um, businesses and I feel like we have just been disadvantaged in that we, we don't always have a lot of money to pour into marketing our businesses. And I felt like because of that, we deserved and needed our own platform owned by Black folks for Black folks. Uh, and so um, I, along the way, have worked with advisors that have told me what about opening it up to all minorities? What about opening it up to everybody? And I'm absolutely not. And I, I've even had offers to partner with other uh, businesses and apps that have the same similar type of models. And, and we would be able to add a filter to look for black owned businesses. And I, I didn't want to do that either. I really want this to be all about black owned businesses because I feel like we deserve it in short. <laughs> No, I, I agree. I think it's I think it's a beautiful platform. I think it's a beautiful brand. Um, what has been your experience connecting with these business owners? What are what have they uh, what were they lacking that you were able to provide for them? There's a technology gap that I find. There's definitely a digital divide and a, especially a digital marketing divide. And, you know, there, there are so many things that you can mean when you say digital marketing and, but whatever those things are that are right for that particular business, um, I find that we're lacking a lot of times. And again, it can be expensive or it can be perceived as expensive a lot of times um, to hire on a marketing firm or to run ads or to, to do all these, these different things that can get you the traction and the traffic that you need. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of folks don't have email lists because they're not doing list building um, and lead generation activities. Uh, they're just putting the stuff out on social media with no strategy. Uh, there's, you know, a lot of things that I feel like, you know, our businesses are lacking that are keeping us from moving ahead. And again, a lot of that is because we don't have the money to just say, I'm going to spend $1,500 a month for a marketing strategist, you know, so 
it was important to me to create something to get the traction and the revenue, but to also be affordable um, and to really create a system that works and is proven and is results driven versus just, you know, and, and I had to change my business model to, to make it be what I envisioned um, because I wasn't bringing a lot of the results that I wanted to to the community. And so I had to re-strategize myself this year to figure out how it is that I bring measurable, that I run measurable campaigns for Black business owners to be able to say, you know, a hundred people looked at your coupon last month, 50 people claimed it, and here are 50 email addresses that you can add to your list, you know, 50 potential new clients for you, you know, so uh, but a lot of us are just not quite there with the digital marketing piece of things. And you have to be mobile and digital if you're going to truly grow these days. Now, tell me a little bit about this, uh, about the scene in Nashville for Black entrepreneurs. Uh, how have you seen it grow uh, during your time there, especially over the last few years? What was it like before? Just give me a little bit of understanding of so Nashville, Black Nashville in general is, is a little different. Uh, I feel like I came here and I knew no one coming from Chicago, a big city to Nashville. I assumed because there were so many HBCUs here that there would be a strong Black culture here. And it was a struggle really finding that when I first moved here. And so I, I felt like I had to somewhat create it because it didn't exist. And I, I started a Facebook group, Black People Making Moves Nashville. And it helped to expose that there truly is a great wealth of Black culture here in Nashville, but it's very segmented and it's very, um, click-ish um, to some extent. And so uh, it's been my goal to really bring that together. Um, the Black business scene here, again, there was no source really to, to know what was Black. And, be, and it, there's so many transplants here with it being the, the it booming city right now. Uh, there's so many people coming from other places and they just don't know. And so there is, there hadn't been really a collective place to bring together blackness in Nashville. And I've tried to create that and continue to try to streamline what that looks like. But on the business side of things, I'll tell you, I was a business owner in Chicago for five years before coming here. And the resources I've had access to here it is invaluable. Like the the amount of help and the outpouring of community and love that I've, I've gotten here and just the resources and the, the knowledge that I've been able to gain here to better myself as an entrepreneur has been truly invaluable and something that I, I didn't experience in Chicago. Not that it's not there, but it's such a big city that, you know, getting access and knowing wh where to move and where to go is a, is a struggle a lot of times. So, um, yeah, Nashville, I think it's a, a great city and it had, but we do have some room for growth on when it comes to black culture and really bringing together the connectivity of, of the black culture here in Nashville. And there are several people who are trying to help make that happen. We have some shop black Nashville and black markets, and, you know, things like that popping up. Um, and I just want to see us support those, you know, those things a little bit more. Now, when I come to Nashville, where am I supposed to eat at? Where, who, who, who has the best spot out there? For okay, food? so you're going to have to go to Slim and Huskies. Hold on, let me write this down. Hold on yep, now. Write it down. You, <laughs> but you know what? They are popping up everywhere. They okay. started here in Nashville. Uh, they went through the Nashville Business Incubation Center. I'm on their junior board. It's, they have wonderful programs. And they have they opened one location here, then they opened another location here. They opened, I think, two locations in Atlanta. 
There's one that opened this week, I think, in California. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I mean, these are three black brothers that have opened up. And this is within the last three years. The, right, all of right. this has happened in wow. the last three years. Awesome. And the pizza is amazing. It's oh, a it's pizza. pizza joint. So okay. it's pizza and it, okay. it's amazing. So, yeah, I take everybody there, but you make your own individual pizza. So um, you decide what you want on it. It's, it's great. And then um, we just found out, sorry if I'm cutting out, I had a little internet buffering. Uh, but my uh, another place that's really been a staple is actually closing. And we just, we just got the announcement yesterday. Wow. Um, Garden wow. Brunch Cafe is a huge black staple here. They have amazing brunch. Those are the two places that I typically take everybody who comes in town. So where the city is very sad to hear about the closing of um, Garden Brunch Cafe, but I think they were kind of going in that direction at one point earlier this year. Then they decided this, the community kind of rallied to, and they decided to stay, but then they got hit hard by the tornado. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. I was going to ask if if uh, this COVID nineteen and pandemic talk, you know, how is that you know impacting Nashville? And then you know the business owners that you've been speaking with, what have you been hearing over these last? few months as things are shifting to a more digital uh, way of moving? We have had a rough year here in Nashville specifically because, I mean, we had the tornado and then two weeks later, we, within two weeks, you know, everything was starting to be shut down by COVID-19. And, you know, one of my friends who's a Black business owner here specifically, he lost his entire building that had three businesses in it. He had three businesses in one building. The whole building is gone and has been demolished, you know, ever uh -huh. since. Then. So, you know, it's 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 been kind of demoralizing, I think, to to be hit by that. Then, you know, the COVID nineteen has been hard across the country for everyone, probably across the world for small business owners. Um, it's been difficult, but I will say that. Uh, the community here has been, uh, we've tried to help each other to sustain the businesses that have been still open, you know, restaurants that have done carry out and, and pick up type of things. We've tried to still um, support them as much as possible. Um, I, I feel awful for the folks that are like in the beauty industry because they they seem to be taking a, the hardest hit or really really hard hit because they they haven't been able to really operate at all i think that a lot of folks have taken it as a wake-up call that yeah. you know you have to be able to easily pivot re-strategize um you know, we don't know how long this thing is going to be going on. We don't know the next time. You know, and my message to folks has been, and it, it doesn't have to be COVID-19 because the COVID-19 shut down the, the world, but your world can be impacted by your own personal emergency at right. any time. Right. And if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So if you, you weren't ready now, you need to figure out how you can get ready for next time because there will be a next time. And if it's not COVID-19, it might be a, a close family member passing or, you know, a child getting sick or, you know, you just never know what happens. And that I think this time has really shown us that, you know, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And if you, and as a entrepreneur, you have to have flexibility period, you know, because, the world is changing. Our clients are changing. Everything is changing around us constantly. And if you're not able to easily adapt, you you're going to get left behind in this digital economy. You know, you're going to, you're going to get left behind and people are going to find other solutions. And so, and I think it also is making a lot of us entrepreneurs, you know, like for me, I always see opportunities. I'm a person. I literally this morning was like, Oh, I got an idea. <laughs> like, you know, and, and I'm gonna give it to somebody else. This is something I, I'm not gonna do. But you know, I always see opportunities, and so I hope that you know other entrepreneurs are seeing the opportunities that always come from tragedy. You know, you someone blows up a stadium, or you know, there's a bomb that's in the stadium. Now we can't. We got to take plastic bags to the stadium, right? The, right, the cleaner right. bags. 
or you got to check your purse, right? So that from that, from a tra tragedy came a huge business opportunity for someone who's making hundreds of thousands of dollars by just having you check your purse because you forgot to, that you needed a clear bag, you know? Right. So I think that we have to keep our eyes open to opportunities for our own business, but just overall opportunities in the market that'll arise from this unfortunate situation. You talked about being flexible. Um, how should business owners, especially black business owners, how can they stay ready? What are one, two, maybe three things that they can do to stay ready uh, in case something else happens five years from now, a week from now? Yeah. What can they do to stay ready? Having a plan, writing it down, but starting with having your operations in order and your procedures written down, right? And I'm working with um, Be the Light Solutions right now, actually, and that's what they help you to do. And we are literally walking through very granular. It, it, it takes, like, we're taking hours every two weeks and sitting down and walk and picking one part of my business to walk through step by step and document what the process or procedure is. And I mean, that's for, you know, building my team, team onboarding. We're talking about every single task that has to happen in my business, every single everything. I mean, onboarding of clients, what does that look like? Offboarding of clients, what does that look like? What, you know, every, what is our communication plan? What is the contingency? All of those things we're getting documented so that if something happens to me or I want to go on vacation or whatever it might be, that someone on my team has something they can reference to, to pick up the ball and run with it. If I drop dead tomorrow, someone will have, you know, something to pick up the ball and be like, okay, this is what she was, this is how this is done for Black Business Boom, you know? And that's where a lot of our businesses are lacking. And so I encourage folks to really get with someone who does this. I mean, and um, Brandy from Be The Light Solutions is a good friend of mine and she is, a, what we call a business transformation consultant. And I'm telling you, she digs deep into it and it, it has transformed not only my business and my processes, but my way of thinking about my business and everything I do now. I'm like, Oh, gotta, gotta have a process. <laughs> like I gotta walk through this. I gotta have a workflow, you know, right, right. It, it's just been amazing. And so you know, again, what if you have, especially if you have a brick and mortar business, what do people, if something happened to you, if you got hospitalized, if you got hurt or whatever it might be, could someone just go in your, your office and know what bills to pay and how to pay them? Could someone walk in, you know, go in your kitchen and, and run it, you know, if you're not there, like we need those things. And it's so important for you to have that's how you stay ready like that that is how you stay ready in business having structure having vision and having a plan all mapped out uh, have a document. documentation and then being able to remove yourself from that business and it's still functioning uh at the same you know at the same level yeah and that's the only way that we truly get to the point where we're working on our business versus in our business that's the only way you'll ever be able to do that and it's so important that we're able to work on our business versus spending all day running around like a crazy person and doing all these different tasks, right? So the only way that you'll be, a, I, I found this in my own business and I'm like, oh, I need a virtual assistant. I didn't need a virtual assistant. I need a structure in the way I did, did things. I still need a virtual assistant, uh, but now I know exactly how to tell this person what to do and what I actually need them for because before... It was just like, oh, today I, I think I need this. Tomorrow I think I need this. And nobody wants to work in that type of chaos. So, you know, and that's why a lot of times we're not able to keep and find and keep good staff because it's chaotic and they can't function in that type of madness. So once we truly, you know, th and this is a great time to examine yourself and your business because like, things are slow for everybody. <laughs> so it's a great time to really truly examine yourself and your business and figure out where your inefficiencies are and what you can do to improve. 
before we let everybody know how they can be a part of your network um, and be a part of your platform, what are some of the businesses that stand out? Maybe one or two businesses uh, that have a unique idea that are part of Black Business Boom uh, that people may not be aware of and they should definitely check out. Great. I will tell you, I'm going to give you one that I can definitely think of here in Nashville and they, they ship nationwide. They actually have a Nashville location and a New Orleans location, the Cupcake okay. Collection. And they have amazing cupcakes. They are one of our partners. They are offering a boom box. Uh, so it's a black business boom box of six cupcakes. They're offering a coupon uh, for 25% off on our app, Boomin. Um, and they quickly, eat, I mean, you just know when you, when you talk to the owner of this business and she's just an amazing entrepreneur and she like, started her business with like five dollars or something crazy like like literally like five dollars in her kitchen with like no lights and so you know it, the story itself is amazing right but you know when you're talking to those type of people who have that type of story that they will make it through this and they will make it through anything because that that's the mind they have that mindset of i'm going i can i came from nothing i started this with nothing and i can do it all over again if i wanted to and you know they of course had to shut down both of their stores due to covid 19 but due to they they formed some partnerships with other restaurants that were doing pickup uh, where people could still get their cupcakes because people love these cupcakes like <laughs> they are amazing and they're a big deal here in nashville and uh people were still able to get go and pick up there at the you know at, at the cupcake collection here and i think in new orleans they're doing pickup they also have strategic partnerships where other restaurants were selling their cupcakes plus they're shipping anywhere in the country and so while of course business has slowed down it hasn't nearly come to a stop and so i'm I'm just inspired by that that level of strategy and flexibility and doing things as well as just how um, Mignon Francois, who's the owner, how she's been able to brand herself and the business is just completely an inspiration to me. Um, and I, I'm, I think that the level of customer service and everything they, you know, is just amazing. And so that's one I'll definitely shout out for their flexibility during a time like this and just their ability to build a strong brand that has been consistent for years and that is respected um, in the Nashville and New Orleans community as well as around the country. So and what was um, her name again? I, I just want to make sure we got it on record. Uh, Mignon Francois from the Cupcake Collection. The Cupcake Collection. Yes, Thank the you Cupcake so much Collection. That. And you said they ship nationwide? They do. And the oh, boom box. Oh, watch out. So again, that boom box with six cupcakes. So it has six different cupcakes that you can try. Okay. Um, some of their, their um, staples, like the sweet potato cupcake. And then they have one that is exclusive to the boom box. So you can't get it anywhere else but in the nice. boom box. Um, and if you go to the Cupcake Collection website and use coupon code BOOMIN, B-O-O-M-I-N, that'll get you 25% off of that box. So it'll be uh, $13.50 for the Boom Box versus $18. So um, great gift for anyone. Great way to you know celebrate someone. Father's Day is coming up. So yeah, that's one of that's one of my partners, one of our merchant partners that. I literally, when I started this business, I'm like the cupcake collect. I have to have the cupcake collection, <laughs> and it just happened like during COVID nineteen. Like brought mm. that opportunity for me, and it. I mean, so excited just to to have that partnership because I know, you know, like I said, their brand is so strong that it brings credibility to my brand. Not to right. me. Yeah, I think we have to think about those type of strategic partnerships, you know, in business. Uh, who can really boost your brand like you know black equity like how can you all <laughs> i want to partner with you all because you know you have your following and they trust you and i have mine and they trust me and how can we all kind of bring things together and partner to create something uh, bigger for one another i like that and i like the fact that um you have that exclusive 
cupcake just for your platform. I think that's that's mm-hmm. awesome. So somebody's listening to this, a business owner is listening to this episode and they're like, hold on now, how do I get part, be a part of this? How do I get my, my cupcakes, you know, out there? So how can a business owner, uh, you know, go through that process and uh, work with you and uh, the Booming app and Black Business Boom overall? Yes. So if you go to blackbusinessboom.com, there is a form on the front page, as well as if you go to the, if you click business owners and go to grow your business, uh, there is a form there that you'll fill out. Um, I, one of the things that I've changed during this COVID-19 time is that I want to talk to every business owner, or I want someone on my team to talk to every business owner. And because I feel like building a relationship is more important than just exchanging money, you know, and for services. So I really, we, we want to be more hands-on and working with our partners to create an amazing deal. So you'll submit that form. Someone from either myself or someone from my team will reach out to schedule some time um, to chat with you about your business, your goals, and, and your and craft a promotional offer for your business. Um, and we are right now, as we move into different um, places, we are offering 30 day for a 30 day free trial. Um, and we, within that 30 days, we want to promote your business and bring you results that make it so that you, you would be a fool to not work with Black Business Boom going forward. And that's my goal, you know, is to be like okay. show out during those first 30 days so that you're like, okay, they're for real, you know, because you can put your, you, a coupon anywhere. You can have, you know, use any platform for marketing. And I want it to be a no brainer that you work with me. And so um, I knew that it was important. I mean, I'm going to be honest for Black folks, results we want to see, like, we pay you anything. We want to see some results for it, like, and as quickly as possible. And so that is my goal is to bring you results, bring traffic, bring people to your website, bring people in your door of your restaurant or whatever it might be um, immediately, uh, as quickly as possible and be able to give you um, the data because, you know, these days data is more valuable than oil. I read articles yes. and, yes. said, and that, yeah. that's like where we're missing the, we're dropping the ball a lot of times because we're not building strong email or text campaigns. We're not building a list to, to reach out to our existing customers to tell them we have a special or we're opening back up or whatever. We're so dependent on social media and it can be a great tool, but social media needs to be a tool for you to generate leads that you own because you don't own them likes. You don't own those follows. Right. Uh, so that that's the type of education I'm trying to, uh, give our black business owners but yeah that's that go to blackbusinessboom.com or feel free to dm me um on instagram or facebook at black business boom on instagram black business boom on facebook or email me directly um at danielle at black i love it i love it i love your brand i love everything you stand for and i look forward to seeing black businesses prosper uh, so please keep us up to date. Uh, don't be a stranger. Please come back uh, to Black Equity. We would love to continue the conversation, especially if something happens in the culture that is noteworthy that we need to tackle. I would love to sit down with you and uh, kind of go back and forth and, and uh, analyze the situation together. Absolutely. I love it. I, I, I love what you're doing. I'm so happy that we, we connected and I, I think it's a true testimony to the power of networking and, and uses social networks to network yes. and actually meet, uh, meet new people. So I appreciate the opportunity to sit down and talk with you. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll be talking to you again soon. All righty. <laughs>